In order to understand breast cancer, we have to take a closer look to the main tissues of the breast, which are the breast glands, the milk-producing glands, and the milk ducts that carry milk to the nipple. So let's look at the system, because that will explain to us why there are two different cancers, different breast cancers. Okay. The breast glands are the oldest tissue of the breast. Being the oldest tissue, remember what we just learned, originating from the mesoderm, the, the breast glands are controlled from the old brain, to be precise, from a specific area in the cerebellum. During the later time of evolution, the milk ducts were lined with a new cell layer, which is squamous epithelial tissue. And this new layer, this new tissue type, this new cell layer, being a younger tissue type, is controlled from the cerebral cortex from a very specific area. So what we can conclude here is the following. As far as breast glands and the milk duct lining is concerned, that these two tissues developed at different times during evolution, they derive from different embryonic germ layers, they consist of different tissue types. They are controlled from different parts of the brain. They relate to different biological conflicts, and therefore they cause different types of breast cancer. And we're going to start with the breast glands. The conflict that is linked to the breast glands is, as Dr. Hammer calls it, a nest worry conflict. In nature, a female can suffer such a nest worry conflict if her offspring is all of a sudden seriously sick or injured. If this is the case, the breast glands in the female breast will instantly start to multiply and to proliferate. And the biological purpose of the cell proliferation is to allow the female to produce more milk to allow the female to produce more milk and, pro and provide more milk for the offspring to speed up healing. And Dr. Hammer found that we women, that our breast glands, so to speak, respond the same way when we unexpectedly worry about a loved one. When a parent, our, one of our children, uh, a partner, a dear friend, a sibling, uh, is a reason of concern. And this is how this works in details. The moment this worry conflict occurs, the conflict impacts in the area of the brain, specifically in the area of the cerebellum that controls the breast glands. And at this moment, the breast gland tissue or the breast glands immediately start to proliferate, forming a breast gland tumor or a breast cancer in the glands. And Dr. Hammer found that even if a woman is not breastfeeding, this age-old biological program is still set into motion because the female breast is synonymous for caring and nurturing. What we have to realize now is that during the conflict active phase, there are no symptoms. So a woman that has a glandular breast tumor that is in the active phase will detect the tumor either through breast self-examination or it will be detected uh, through a uh, mammogram. In any case, uh, conventional medicine, or another point I want to make to clarify that, the size of the tumor, so the size of the glandular breast tumor, is determined by the intensity and the duration of the conflict. In other words, the tumor is always proportional to how intense the conflict is. So the more intense the Roy conflict, the faster and bigger the tumor grows. 
Uh, but so we have to realize again that it is, and I keep emphasizing that, that it is the psyche that is the, comp the driving comp or the leading component of the unit. So again, we cannot ask a woman not to worry. But uh, as I said before, it is a very important step to downgrade the conflict. So to put the worry situation in perspective, to talk about it. The woman will notice she's well or less stressed out. She can and sleep a little bit better and she's not as preoccupied with the conflict because that implies that now the conflict mass is less which means the tumor is going to become smaller because the psyche, the, the brain and in this case of course the organ, uh, the breast glands always work in synchronicity. Because of the cell proliferation, conventional medicine labels such a glandular tumor as a malignant growth. But Dr. Hammer clearly shows us that there is nothing malignant about such a tumor, that this is not a malignant growth, but an age-old natural biological response and no reason to panic. With German new medicine and with the knowledge of the five biological law, my friends, cancer is no longer a mystery. A woman that has been worrying about a loved one for a longer period of time will not be surprised if she finds or finds out that she has a breast gland tumor. She will now understand why she has the breast tumor. She will also understand why she has the tumor in the breast glands. And on top of it, she will understand why she has the breast tumor in her right or in her left breast because we also have an answer for that. Well, Dr. Hammer found whether a woman has a tumor on her right or left breast is determined by her biological laterality, in other words, by her handedness. So this is not if, the, if a woman or if a person writes with the right or left hand. Here we're talking about the biological laterality, which is determined at the first cell division, so at the moment of conception. Uh, the easiest way, or an easy way to determine our laterality, or dis establish it, I should say, is the clapping test. So I ask you please to clap in your hands. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> so the hand that is on top is the leading hand and determines or tells us if we are biologically right or left-handed. Okay? So if the right hand is on top, the person is biologically right-handed. If the left hand is on top, the person is biologically left-handed. And this is the rule. So please remember that. So where are the right-handers? Hands up. And left. Ah, look at that. I knew there's always more than we expect. Okay? okay, so this is the rule. Please remember this now. A right-handed woman response to a conflict with her children or her mother with the left breast or we can say with the left side of the body and she responds to a conflict with her partner who is anybody who is not her mother or her children so her friends her siblings even her father our father is our first partner so to speak our friends so everybody who is not mother or children okay is our is on our right side so a right-handed woman will respond to a worry conflict or a conflict in general uh, uh, over her partner anybody who is not mother and children, with the left side, with the right side of the body. For left-handed, it is reverse. So for left-handed, the right side is the mother-child side and the left side is the uh, partner side. So why is it this way? Well, a right-handed woman like me, I would carry my child on the right side so my, on the left side, so my right hand is free to do things, to operate. Okay? to work and do things. So my mind, let's call it my biological mind, associates the left side with my child. And Dr. Hammer found that this also applies to us right-handers, to, um, uh, to our mother, and that the right side is our partner side.